you know, and you've got to be smart. You know, you coming home and you, you know, or let me talk about me. I'm coming home. I just preached to 1,500 people, 2,500 people. I'm coming home. I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, babe, man, I preached to 2,000 people. Oh, my. And you just preached to 20. I'm not going to do that. That's not a smart woman. Y'all better talk back to me. That's not smart. Why are you preaching to 20? <laughs> oh, no, I just said it. But you understand what I'm saying? It's You're not right. smart. There's something called trauma bonding. Okay. And we do it well in church. Yes, trauma thank bonding. you. Trauma bonding is a perpetual cycle where you stay where you have been wounded and bruised the most. And you won't ever leave because from time to time, it does give you some sense of value some sense of worth but it keeps hurting you over and over and over again and it's unfortunate now you don't got me on my soapbox it's unfortunate that this type of stuff should never happen in the sacred space it shouldn't happen now uh, uh transparent God bless you. God bless you. Welcome, Hannah's. Welcome to Hannah's Girl Talk. I am so excited that we are here again. Amen. Last month was tremendous. Thank you for logging on. Would you do me a favor? Because I do not want to belay the time. Would you go ahead and start liking and sharing it so that everyone will know that we are live and that we are on. Thank you so much for coming on. I see so much, so many of you. Pastor Pamela Peterson, blessings to you. Blessings to you, Robbie. Blessings to you, Shalanda, Minister White. It's so good to see you, Sister Rachel Stevenson. God bless you. For from highway. Thank you so much for logging in. Come on, let's go ahead and share it. I don't want to continue here in this moment too long because our guest is already here and this show is going to be amazing. We're going to discuss some serious things and I know it's going to bless you. I know it's going to bless you. I'm so excited. Blessings, Karima. Thank you. You like my hair, Karima. <laughs> Thank you. My mother is on. Hi, mommy. Mother Robinson, Evangelist Robinson, Sister Betty, bless you. Sister Sharon, Elder Betsy from Boston, blessings to you. Blessings to you from Karan Brown. Blessings to you, Cherie Sampson. God bless you. Go ahead, continue to like and share. Sister Marie, I see you. Blessings to you. I can't wait to see so many of you in person. I miss so many of you. I miss being live with you every Saturday. Blessings to you, Minister Davis. I see you, Kimberly Bryce. Blessings to you, Andrea. Blessings, Sister Doreen. Blessings to you, Tanisha. Blessings to you. Congratulations. She's our newlywed. I see you, Sharon Cook, MIT. Sharon Cook, blessings to you. I see so many of you coming on, Sister Sydney. Thank you, Sister Berna, for sharing. Would you share? Come on, would you share? Because this, this topic, this show today, this episode is going to be very, very, it's going to be very transformation, transformational. Did I say that right? I don't know, but you know what I'm trying to say to you. Hi, daughter. Hi, mommy. Again, blessings, blessings, blessings. It's going to be wonderful. Listen, I'm not going to delay the time. I want to welcome to the platform, to this space, Prophetess Cordelia Wallace and Prophetess Jackie Gates. Would you help me welcome them on to the platform? Blessings to you, women of hey. God. How are you doing? Hi. Hey, hey. Dr. Gates, I love you. your hair. You look wonderful. You well, look wonderful. You. Come on here. That's how you do it. <laughs> You're gorgeous. I'm telling you, that green is you. Thank you, Prophetess Kadia Wallace. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. wonderful. I'm excited. I, I look forward to this time when we all come together every month. I'm so excited. I think I'm probably the biggest fan. <laughs> Listen, we have our special guest with us again, backed by popular demand, yeah. none other than Bishop Liston Page II. Will you help me welcome him on, y'all, to the stage? Ooh. Blessed Bishop. Ooh, the Bishop, the Bishop. Ooh. 
Blessings, Bishop. How you doing? I'm surrounded with these Nubian queens, and I am so happy. My my God, look at Jacqueline Gates. Look at Lord. Did I swing my hair? I don't know. Go ahead. Do it. Do it again. <laughs> Listen, no. let me say before we get started. I want to congratulate Dr. Jacqueline Gates on being installed on tomorrow as the senior pastor. I want to congratulate you. I want to celebrate you. Yes. I am so proud of you. And I just know that the best is yet to come. Amen. Amen. Yes. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. Um, Prophetess Cordelia Wallace, would you lead us in our prayer before we start? Most gracious Father, we bless you and we thank you for ordaining this hour, this time for us. We pray, God, that you would not only talk through us, but we pray that some woman, some man would be healed, some deliverance would come. I pray, Father, that you anoint us afresh, take tiredness away from us, do what it is that you do best. We promise to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank you for the season that you've brought us into. Thank you for moving us forward and not backwards. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we do pray. And we all said, amen. 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 Thank you so much, ma'am. I do hear a little feedback. I don't know what that is about. Um, before we get started, I just want us to just check our devices so that way everyone can hear. Um, I do hear it. Am I the only one that hears it? Okay. Okay. Yes, there we go. There we go. Much better. I don't hear it anymore. Okay, so we're going to just turn this corner. We've been talking about Hannah's story, but today we're going to turn the corner and we're going to come from 2 Samuel chapter 13, verses 2 through 17. I'm going to read it in its entirety. It is a little lengthy, but I want to read it so everyone can understand where we're going, what we're going to be talking about. 2 Samuel chapter 13, verses 2 through 17. I'm going to read it in the easy English version. And it says, Amnon became ill because he wanted his sister Tamar so much, but she had never slept with a man and it seemed difficult for Amnon to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend called Jonadab. He was the son of David's brother Shimei, and he seemed to know what to do about anything. He asked Amnon, why do you seem so sad every morning? Tell me about your trouble. Amnon said to him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. Jonabed said, go to bed, say that you are ill. Your father will come to see you. Then you can ask him that your sister Tamar might come to give you something to eat. Say, please let me see her make food and then let her feed me with it. So Amnon went to bed. He said that he was ill. When the king came to see him, Amnon spoke to him, please let my sister Tamar come. I want her to make some special bread while I watch her. Then she can feed me with it. David sent a servant to Tamar. Go to your brother Amnon and make some food for him, he said. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house. He was in his bed. She took flour and water and she mixed them well. She made cakes while he watched her and she baked them. Then she took some and gave them to him. But when he would not eat them, Rather, but he would not eat them. Send everyone out of here, Amnon said. So everyone left him. Then Amnon said to Tamar, bring the food here into my bedroom so that you can give it to me with your own hands. So Tamar took the cakes that she had made and she brought them to Amnon in his bedroom. But when she went to him, he took hold of her and he said, come to bed with me, my sister. Do not let, do not do it, my brother, she said. Do not cause me to do a wrong thing like that. 
We in Israel should not do things like that. It is an evil thing. Think about me. Nobody will honor me. I will be ashamed and I will not be able to hide myself. And nobody will honor you. People would think that you were like the worst men in Israel. Speak to the king. I am sure that he will let you marry me. But he refused to listen to her. And he was stronger than she. So he took her and had sex with her. Then Amnon hated her. He hated her more than he loved her. Go away, he shouted. No, she said to him, to send me away would be a worse thing to do. It would be worse than the bad thing that you have already done to me. But he refused to listen to her. He shouted for his special servant and to take him. Take this woman out of here and lock the door behind her. And that's the reading of the word. Before we get into our questions, I just want to pose the question to each of you. After reading this text, what is your thoughts concerning this text? We're going to start with you, Bishop Page, because you are a special guest, and then we're going to go to Prophetess Wallace and then Dr. Jacqueline Gates. Well, uh, thank you so much again for the invitation. Uh, Pastor Hattie, and of course, to my esteemed uh, colleagues, I think the reading of the of the pericope for me is the Amnon Tamar injustice mm. and how she says something to him that's very interesting. And as you read it, it, it struck me in verse number uh, maybe verse number 12, she answered him, no, my brother, mm. do not force me for such a thing is not done in Israel. Do not do anything so vile. She mm. said, as for me, where could I carry my shame? And as for you, you would be as one of the scoundrels in Israel. Now, therefore, I beg you, here's the key. Speak to the king. She mm. says, go and ask the king who is our father, mm. and he will give you to me through a legitimate means. We will be legitimately connected, but he would not listen to her. And then after he got some, <laughs> after he hit it, my he Lord found out he didn't love her. He was lusting after her. Hmm. And then he put, it's so horrible. It's so horrible because she says to him, don't put me out like that. She said, putting me out and dishonoring me and allowing me, you know, just to leave, just leave that, that distastefully. She said, putting me out is worse than the act of raping me and manipulating me. He said, at least let me walk out the room with some dignity. Let me leave with some honor. Can you at least give me an appreciation day before you let me go like that? That's basically what she was saying. And he would not heed to the council because he was listening to a trickster called Jonadab, who was a scoundrel himself that kind of put the whole plot you no, know, he put the whole plot together. So when I when I look at the narrative, that's what I see. I see uh, a man that dishonors a woman who he said he loved, but after he got some, he realized I don't love her. I was in lust with her, and after his lust was satisfied, he realized he didn't want to have anything else to do with her. That's what I kind of see in the narrative. I, I just, you know, <clears throat> I, I think that that's exactly, I was looking at the same, the same verses and, and it was his, I think what we need to say initially is that they were half brothers and sisters. Let's, yes. let's start there. That's let's, right. let's put that up. So everybody clearly understands they were half brother and sisters, but either way they had, somebody had the same blood. Mm. But it was this friend 
who did this whole plot planning that brought this into manifestation. Um, and I just, it cr makes me cringe. Yes. That he devalued her like this. And, and, and the reason, and he knew, he knew exactly what he was doing. Hmm. It was, it was like a chase for him. It was, you know, it was, it was that, and I, I don't know, cause I'm not a man, but it is that man chase. And then once I, once I fulfill my chase, you know, I'm done, you know? Um, and I, and that's the sad part. The other parts that are sad is that he would look fool. He would be foolish in hmm. the eyes of Israel hmm. and she would no longer be accepted Mm. in the eyes of Israel. So it was a lose-lose situation. And for him not to make her honorable, mm. that that is, you know, but that's what happens. You know, that's, that's what happens so many times. And then, and then you end up being in the church and people are not so much talking about you, but they're kicking each other under the chair, mm. you know? Um, so that's what I thought about it. Yeah. Wow. Dr. Gates, what are your thoughts? Yes. Um, bless you. Gorgeous. Um, my thoughts would be um, narcissistic traits. Mm. I say that is because today we're living in this hip hop and this hookup culture. And so that whole between the immature boys or the men um, to say, you know, I know I can get that. I know I can hit. That. Yeah. They have that mindset and that selfishness is there and um, innocent damsels, innocent women of God find themselves in this space of being taken advantage or as Bishop said, manipulated mm. um, because for us, it is emotions it is the words, the flattery words, those affirmations. And before you know it, they talked your whole outfit off of you. Wow. You know, the text paints it differently. But I would just really put in um, my thought of this Gnosticism that has to be castrated mm. um, in our interpersonal relationships. Mm. It, mm -hmm. it really has to be. And... I don't know what the remedy will be or the prescription is, but I think that's what happened because the, the value for me is when he pulled out and released to the ground. Hmm. Wow. There was no love in that. When there's love and there's intimacy, but I was saying they were naked and they were not ashamed. So hmm. why I pull out? Hmm. It's because you want to be absolved of a responsibility. Let me just release and let me go. Wow. Wow. That's so heavy. So let me ask, let me start off with this question. What causes a man that claims or that really believes he loves you to then hate you once he gets what he wants from you? What causes a man who claims he loves you? Because in the Bible, Amnon was just so, so sick because he just had to have her. What, what causes him to think that he loved her? Because we see it all the time. He was so infatuated with her beauty. He had to have her. He got himself so sick. Everyone started noticing. Well, I can't say everyone because only one person noticed his behavior change. But he got himself so worked up because he had to have her. And as soon as he got what he wanted from her, the Bible says that he hated her. Prophetess Wallace, what are your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> this is so packed yeah. with so many, so many things at yes. this point. <clears throat> I, and, and, and let's, our, our, and, and we're keeping it under our church umbrella. Yes. That's right. So, so, so let's, you know, I love Bishop Liston Page. Yes, I do. <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, your parts don't have the Holy Ghost. Mm. You know, and, 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 and at this, this hour, you know, this particular, this particular woman was in a catch 22 situation mm. and she just could not navigate herself out of it. But, but there are women 
that have choices mm -hmm. in this action. The question is not that they don't have choices. Mm. The question is, are they just as attracted mm. thinking that this encounter is going to make him love me? Mm. See, the problem is, and I think Bishop said that the last time, the problem is we have identified sex and not love. That's right. Because he, I, he even said a man can go to bed with multiple women and not be in love with them. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So, so that, and, and, and then I want to talk about the girls for a minute because you cannot be so desperate mm. that you share your goods or you give up your goods, mm. you know, uh, in, in, you know, he take you out to dinner. The first thing is, I mean, I, I, I never know. Thank you, Kirtland. I, I never know that, that, that the Holy ghost doesn't kick in and say, I need to get away from this. Because this is turning down a direction mm. that is not going to work for me, mm. you know. Mm. So that's that's kind of where I'm 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 seeing it. But <clears throat> uh, having sex with somebody ain't gonna make them marry you. Having sex with somebody ain't gonna make them fall in love with you. They gonna just call the guys up on the phone and say, "Man, you know that girl that said I said I was going I got it. We good." And and that's it. You know, they might come back. They may not come back. So, Bishop, let me ask you, because you represent the men. What what <laughs> happened? <laughs> she said that so eloquently. Yes. I, I, I represent the predatorial. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> We're the predators. No, in yes. all fairness to the men. In all fairness to the men, what happens to a, a what should a man do when he thinks he's really convinced that he is in love with someone because he had those feelings for years or months? And as soon as he gets her, all of a sudden he doesn't want her anymore. What is the appropriate behavior to do in a situation like that? How do you navigate out of that where now you're not taking advantage of the woman because you didn't really understand what you were feeling? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be very honest with you. I'm probably not the one. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to ask me that. Lord God. <laughs> Out, out. See, Cordelia already blew it out the water. She <laughs> said, our parts do not have the Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? She is 1,000% correct. That is why we practice something called progressive sanctification. That's, mm. right. That's where being honest, with yourself kicks in. Mm -hmm. What does Solomon say? Uh, whoever has no control over their own spirit is like a city broken down mm -hmm. without walls. Right. So the, the, the there's two characteristics or traits out of the nine traits of the gifts of the spirit or the fruit of the spirit, singular, which is love, in self-control and all the other seven traits are sandwiched by these bookends, love and self-control. But because our flesh mm -hmm. can only be bridled so long, when you are attracted to someone, and let me put it all the way real, I don't want to marry nobody I'm not attracted to Absolutely. and that I don't want sexually. I want it. I want it. I want it. I want it. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. if you marry someone, marriage is not spiritual. Marriage is carnal. Marriage is two people socially interacting with each other and there must be there must be some eros mm. eros mixed with some agape there's got to yes. be some eros there but when i look at the text there was no eros mm. there was nothing but well there was no agape there was nothing but eros and lust i mean licentiousness he mm. wanted this woman but 
history has a sad way of repeating itself. This is not the first time we see this in the scriptures. In fact, uh, 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 Gates so eloquently interjected it in her soliloquy when right. she talked about Judah right. and his sons. You know, uh, he had three sons mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Onan and Sh uh, Shua. And the Bible talks about how the Levite law and one brother dies and the next brother is to marry the deceased right. brother's wife. And he goes into her and he gets to the climax. He pulls out yeah. and spills the seed on the ground. Right. That's basically where we are in the body of Christ. Wow. We mm -hmm. want intimacy without commitment. Oh, and you can't exactly. have intimacy without commitment. But that's yeah. the church. We yeah. come to the church to get these climaxes, but wow. we don't want intimacy. We don't want a seed to be planted in fertile soil. So we pull out wow. before the seed Wow. Can be planted, and that's what's happening in many of our churches. That's one example. To show the other example, Lot, yes. Lot leaves Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. That's what happens. His two daughters look at their father, yes, and they desire their that's daddy, right. and they come up with a plot. Mm -hmm. Let's get the father drunk, right. intoxicated, where he cannot make rational decisions. And anytime you're full of lust, you cannot make rational decisions. The little head leads the big head, if you know what I mean. Mm. <laughs> that little <laughs> head <laughs> leads the big head. If oh I, what I, mean, I mean, come on, that, that's what it is. And it is. you got to be honest that you got to bridle that. You got to bring that stuff that's under right. control. And he got advice from another freak. Jonathan yeah, yeah. was a freak. That's it right. Normally, predators always run in packs with mm. other predators because had a, he had a healthy friend, his okay. healthy friend would have said, you know what? That's your half sister. But based on this society, go to your father, the king, and he will endorse and sanction y'all being together. But he didn't want to do that. He just wanted the sex. He did not want the commitment. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wanted the sex. And not the commitment. That's right. Prophetess Gates, what are your thoughts? Yeah, and I think that we have to be so very careful with power. Mm. So, you know, it's just been mulling in my head of you saying about the hate. Um, and I think that sometimes powerful men, and I don't want to use this, but I'm going to go there a little bit about titles title or leaders mm -hmm. where they are just stuck on a title and so they feel entitled sure. without any boundaries that I can have this, I can have that. You cannot tell me no. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very careful that we don't abuse power mm -hmm. and then we have a broken down system and a culture of people that are dr driven by their flesh and their carnality. Wow. None of our um, none of us outside of the mercy of God, which endure forever, but God's grace yes. gives us space to get ourselves together. And so we, we don't, we're not absolved of responsibility, but I think the way we handle relationship, the way we handle power, the way we handle love, mm -hmm. even your own lust, because James says we are driven by our own, where we are enticed and we're driven by our own lust. That's right. right. Enticing during my own lust. Yeah. And and so that's what we'll see that. And I I just to um credit the men, not that they need that credit, but to also say some women, and this is not a disparaging statement, but some women just want that power in them. Mm. They don't want the commitment. Wow. They just want that power. They just want that bishop. They just want that apostle. Back to the title of leaders. They just want that in them. And once mm. they get that, it's something about wherever they're lacking, they feel validated because mm. they've had that stature or that standard of man inside of them. Wow. That's powerful. Yeah. You know, that is. 
That's that that that's heavy. Well, what do you do when you are called to? Because in this case, this was a servant. She was acting as a servant, and she was called to serve someone that she did not know who was lusting after her. So, are we leaving our female servants unprotected by having them serve in different capacities that will harm them? Well, I think, you know, you have to be very careful and, and there has to be an order, you know, and, and, and we don't like to talk about old church or, mm -hmm. you know, we want everything to be new church now or this this kind of culture of church. But, <clears throat> you know, there, there was some standards. And then I think that's the word we need to say. There were some standards. There was some order that was brought to our daughters and our sons. You know, uh, and we had what we call church mothers, mm. you know, and church right. mothers, they were worse than adjutant generals because one, they they would correct you. They were not intimidated to correct you. They were not um, impressed with you. Uh, and if they saw you misappropriately talking to to leadership or misappropriately talking uh, to a married man, they would kind of pull you off to the That's side. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so we're, we are, we are lacking that. And, and, and in a house, mm. the leader sets the tone on who serves mm. who in a house. Mm. And so it is inappropriate for female to be serving a male speaker. Mm. Mm. It's, in, it's mm. inappropriate. Because she shouldn't go in there because he might change his underwear while he's changing his after he's preached and, right. and he's changing his shirt. You know, it's inappropriate to do that. You're setting the stage That's right. for a situation to occur and a phone number to be uh, handed down. So, mm. so we have to go back and, and recount now. How do how do we protect our young girls? How do we protect women that we are saying that we're teaching them how to be servants? Mm. Because we're, we're, if you're putting him or her, rather, in a room with a male, that's not teaching her. Mm. That's not. You're setting her up to fail. Mm. Because I, I am completely... There, once the anointing has lifted... Yes. Anybody that has been anointed and you have preached under the unction of the anointing of God, once that thing lifts from you, your flesh, that's why people go out to eat after church, because you're trying to find some kind of balance in all of this. So your flesh now is at a high. So mm. you got a, a, a 29 year old in the room patting your shoulder, trying to get your sweat off. You Come see on. how Bishop Page is looking at me right now? You know, this kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> as hard as he has just preached, he got this 29-year-old flinging her hair, trying to wipe down his sweat. There's a problem that is going to occur. I, I definitely agree. And I think that we, we get in trouble sometimes. I've seen it happen that because there are women that come to our churches and they move over into that next level of daughters and we get comfortable with them. But I still think the standards should be there, whether they served you for five months or 15 years, the standards should still be the standard. Bishop uh, Page, what are your thoughts about this? Well, I think women have always been objectified because of patriarchal and misogynistic thinking. And I think that as 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 Cordelia so eloquently said it, uh, we set our sisters up to be temple concubines mm. um, because we don't put we don't put accountability systems in place where they're not preyed upon by experienced predators. Uh, and I, it's, it's, it is what it is. I think, you know, when you travel the world ministering as we all have, we, we if we're not careful, can act like we're blind 
to the spirit of a predator. And we know homosexual tendencies, mm -hmm. just like we know strong, heterosexual, unbridled tendencies. Mm -hmm. We know it. Now, we can act like it's not there, but we know it's there. And when I send someone, male or female, to pick up a predator that I know have predatorial tendencies, and mm. that is their history, and that is their modus operandi. I am not protecting the person who I am supposed to be training and mentoring and shepherding. Mm. So, you know, I think all of us have to be honest about falling many times into the trap of being overly accommodating and gratuitous with who we allow to serve because right. some people serve because they want to be close, they say, to the anointing. No, they mm -hmm. don't. They want to get close to the man or the woman of God. And we have to know how to draw those lines of demarcation. And, and, and Cordelia says some powerful because it's happened to me where I never forget I was preaching in, it's happened to me a couple of times. I was preaching in California and, uh, and also in Ohio somewhere. And I get off the plane. I'm at the baggage claim with my assistant, who was a male. And this young lady walks up, attractive young lady. And she said, Bishop, I said, hey, how you doing? She said, I'm here to pick you up. Well, right away, I got an instant attitude because of how I was trained by my father, Bishop Liston Page. And then I had another bishop that uh, you all may know him. He's out there in Freeport, Long Island. His name is Bishop Ronald Carter. Bishop Ronald Carter was like my father. And he taught me about traveling as an evangelist. Yes. He said, Page, he would call me Page. I bet not every year that a woman picked you up, a woman took you here, a woman, because it was traps. All those things become traps. Now that's not to say you can't have friends yeah. of the opposite sex, because I think all of us have a level of friendship with each other and respect for each other, but we also have some boundaries. I'm not calling Cordelia three o'clock in the morning. I ain't calling Jacqueline Gates at no two o'clock in the morning. I certainly ain't calling Hattie Robinson at no 12, 31 o'clock. Cause them late calls, uh -huh. I ain't calling them. Listen to Paige, ain't calling them a prayer. That, that <laughs> I don't want no scripture. We ain't doing it. It ain't about <laughs> So, you know, certain people, you have to have respect mm -hmm. for boundaries. And those boundaries will stop you from falling in the traps because all it takes is me and Jacqueline on, on, on the phone one night having a conversation about a scripture. And that scripture conversation turned in the stuff where you know, Bishop, what you think. Well, what you think, Jack? Well, I think this. And before, before well, you know you it, you. <laughs> and before you know it, you're having compromising yes, yes. conversations. So you have to know yourself and you gotta be honest with yourself. If you like women as a man, I'm a man, I like women. So I know I have to be, I have to, I have to, I have, I have to guard myself. If, if there's a, a, a woman who likes men, she's got to be very careful. If it's a man that is effeminate mm -hmm. and he has not been tapped, touched, are tampered with yet. He needs to stay away from people that will prey on that behavior because, because a man is feminine does not mean he's homosexual. But, right. but if you put him in the wrong environment with a predator, mm -hmm. a old seasoned demon, he'll turn him out and before you know it, He's full blown doing stuff that he would have never done if we yeah. would have kept him protected. That's right. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's right. Dr. Gates, um, just so everyone can have a clear understanding, would you be able to give some uh, traits of a predator? 
So because a lot of times, like even in the scripture, she didn't recognize it. I don't think that she would have went to his house and certainly not in his bedroom had she recognized or was able to discern some of the traits. So what are some traits of a predator? Um, I will give two. The first is conversation, those flattery words. Mm. So therefore, the level of one, your value and how you feel about yourself, hearing it from the opposite sex is only complimenting what you know. So one, it is that that conversation, words. Mm. Second, gifts. Mm. Gifts. And they can come up there together, one, one and one A. <laughs> gifts, um, you know, that whole seduction. Mm. Of, of gift buying and and we translate gift buying as love as interest and it it could be it could be but um if you don't know the nature and you haven't studied people and environments because predators stay around those dry environments mm. so i think a lot that we are describing today um we have high church we have low church a lot of low church environments is where those predators hang out. Mm. Before you know it, it's a whole orgy. Everybody, I have this one, I have that one, this one, I have that one, now I have that. It's just a whole cesspool. You took high church, there, there, there is top security. You know, you're mm. not going into certain bishop's offices. Everybody got to turn their phone off. You know, it, it just all of these other kind of, um, you know, uh, security measures that are in place, as well as wholeness. Mm. and balance. I think that mm. also we should present that the kingdom system, there is some good, healthy environments. Mm. But we try today, we are bringing you into awareness of those predatorial systems. So those are the two that I would give. I just want to jump in there for a second, because one of the things I think that that we're missing when we look at this young woman is that she went in under the title of a servant. Mm -hmm. We can't. We can't just think that she um, um, she was naive or she was, you know, she thought she was being a servant. Mm. And when we define that word, what we are seeing in the church. Yes, it has multiple connotations behind it. Mm. I can be your servant and carry your bag. I can sure. be your servant and carry your clothes. I can be your. If you tell me my servant, you call me at at, at ten o'clock because I gave you a room in the hotel because I need you to be available to mm. Bishop's page. He might need. <laughs> 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 And a God may help. Yes, he's, he's he might thirsty. Need some hot tea and honey, and he <laughs> he's gonna call you and say, "My throat is dry. I'm mm. feeling raspy, and I gotta preach in another city tomorrow. Would it be possible for you to get me some honey and hot tea?" Now, if she's a servant, that's what they call her in her head. She's a servant. She's gonna get up, put her clothes on go down to 7-Eleven, get him that hot tea, that peppermint tea, put the honey in it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because in her head, she believes that she's being a servant. Mm. Now, when she knocks on the door and he comes in a row and says, do you want to come in? I didn't mean to inconvenience you a little bit, you know, but it's all cool. Come in and talk to me for a little bit. You, that, that, that again. Yes. She feels like she's being, she's obeying the instructions mm. that have been given to her at that moment. And she's mm. being a servant. Tamar, I believe that she believed that she was being a servant because it was her father who Come on. told her to go to her half brother's house. Come and on. the operative word in the text, she was a virgin. She Meaning was. that she lacked experience right. and she was op operating from a position of naivete. That's and right. normally that's what predators do. That's they get people mm -hmm. or they prey on people who lack experience. That's right. Because if you lack experience, I can shape your thought. I can create a culture. 
I can I can I can infuse in you a certain ideology and then I can pervert your mind to thinking wrong is right. That's and right. right is wrong because watch this as she serves notice what he says. He says I want all of the other attendants that were experienced oh. I want y'all to leave. Wow. Ooh, he was not wow. able to collaborate a story of manipulation. Uh, so anytime you have people that want to isolate you from leadership, from your pastor, from on. voice of authority, that's a predatorial spirit. Uh, Anybody, anybody, and, and I'm glad, I'm glad, and, and but for see, Jackie has a whole lot of experience, so she's just you been, know why. Of pastor, <laughs> but you know, she's been passing longer than the installation, okay? She knows <laughs> this, and Cordelia, you know this, and how do you know this? Uh -huh. When when we have members that we find out have had conversations mm -hmm. with other people, mm -hmm. normally it's too late. They're already they're already hook, line, and sinker. They're drawn in, and the person has already raped them, Jesus. taken advantage of them, left them wounded and hurt, and now we're left to nurture them, and they never trust, and they never serve the way they did when they were a virgin. Jesus. And I think what we need to do is also attach to that, the Bible says when a man, seduces a virgin and takes her innocence, her mm. virginity. Mm. He had to marry her, marry her. Yes. her. He had to pay her father the bride's price, mm. the wage. That means there was a repercussion for his action. Right. Unfortunately, right. in our settings, we normally celebrate predatorial behavior. Right. It's celebrated. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't see people being taken down for preying on people. We mm. see them being elevated, becoming bishops and, and popes and potentates and prophets mm. and all that foolishness. But they should be checked. They really should be checked because mm. predatorial spirit is dangerous. Mm. It's dangerous. It's like Jezebel. It's yeah. like witchcraft. It bewitches people. Mm. It, it gets people's minds all twisted and normally damaged people like that become very difficult to heal. That's because right. in order to heal, I got to take you out of the environment of the toxicity. And the yeah. environment of the toxicity is the church. That's so the right. only way you can heal, I got to take you out of the environment that caused all the damage. Right. And we don't like to tell people, you need to stay home for a while until you heal because we see that as defeat. And I'm finding out in reprogramming people, some people need a sabbatical mm. from ministry, even from the venue that hurt them the most. I didn't say leave the church. I said, you need a sabbatical from the venue because if you don't, you're continuing to perpetuate trauma bonds and you're perpetuating right. negative culture. Mm. Well, who corrects the sons that take advantage of the beautiful female servants who claim they love but discard them? Whose job is it to correct if the father, because we see that the Bible says that David became furious. He was upset about it, but he didn't take any action. He didn't correct it. Whose job is it to correct the sons who are doing these things to the females? Whose job is it? It's the responsibility. It's the responsibility of the father. But the problem in the times that we live in is that no one want to be. No one wants to be responsible because we want friendships, mm. and you cannot be a leader and become familiar with your sons. Your assignment as a father is to prepare your sons to take your responsibility at some later time. So if I cannot correct you, if I can't correct you, then I cannot promote you. And that's the problem that the church is in in this hour because no one wants to be corrected because you correct somebody, they go, well, I don't, 
you don't have to talk to me no more, Pastor Wallace, because I'm going to go over to Pastor Gates Church. I'm going to go over to Bishop Liston Church. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. That's a problem. And and But in this text, it was David's responsibility. It it. I mean, we're getting ahead of the story. Her mm -hmm. elder brother came in and, and, and did what he did. But in reality, her father should have taken the responsibility of her. And to all of the women that are listening, so many women were not raised by their fathers. That's right. They were not raised by their fathers. And, and that's why you had spiritual fathers. Yeah. Hopefully your spiritual father was not trying to sleep with you. Hopefully your spiritual father was there to protect you. Hopefully that's the, the role that they played in your life. But if not, if that person did not, there, there had to have been a male someone, an elder brother, like her elder brother. But the reality is it was David's responsibility mm. to do what, but he was the blame for it because he said to he her, said to go over to your brother's house. Mm. So he had, he had a guilt issue going on in alignment to the fact that he just messed up his daughter. He just mm. messed her up. Messed yeah. her daughter up and then think about his own behavior. You know, sometimes we won't correct people because of some infractions that we are guilty of. That's right. That's and see, right. Paul said, woe is me. Look at the context. He's talking to a Greco-Roman world that is extremely licentious. He mm -hmm. says, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. And then he starts going on to talking about even... If I find myself That's in a right. compromising situation, mm -hmm. I still have a responsibility to speak truth to that behavior. Mm -hmm. And I think what cripples us in this season, we have so many fathers that are transparent, but they're not transformational. Wow. I can be transparent. Wow. But my transparency should cause others to be transformed, mm. not falling into the same trap that I did. And we become the good old boys club. We are sleeping with our daughters. No, 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 no. Fathers have a responsibility to say to the son, listen, I ran through my church before. Don't mm. do that. Don't That's going to end up in ruin. Yeah, I did it. I shouldn't have did it, but I'm going to help you. Don't do that. We don't have anyone that's that transparent. Give me a transparent moment. My father told me when I first started preaching, he said, listen, he said, you see all these women in this church? I said, he said, I said, yeah, dad. He said, I'll tell you what I want you to do. Don't touch nothing in here. He said, but down the street over there, down the street down there, you run through that. <laughs> he said, when you come back here, don't do that because one day you may have to bring your wife into this. My God. Bring your wife into this and all of the other sisters know you like Adam knew Eve and Eve knew Adam. It's going to be a problem. So, you know, hearing men like my dad and, you know, Bishop Ronald Carter had a great influence in my life. Uh, Wilbur Jones, certain men that 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 poured into me as a young preacher mm -hmm. bishop carter and my dad were very hard on me i mean bishop carter used to all all the time oh my god he was ridiculous him and my dad but they would tell you don't go through your church don't mm -hmm. be sleeping in your church your church is not a watering hole stay mm -hmm. out of your church and <laughs> i mean they would say that kind of stuff and and, and fortunately, I picked that up and I understood, you know what, that won't be a good look to do. But it takes fathers mm -hmm. that have experience to tell you that. And I'll be honest with you, and I'm sure you and Jackie and, and Cordelia may disagree with me, but everybody that call themselves fathers are not fathers today. No, I agree. They're, You're right. they're elder brothers. Elder brothers. They're, they're elder yeah. brothers. They're wow. not your father. Yeah. They're elder brothers. And some of them are in positions of fathers, but they're not mature. 
Mm. They're not ready. They're still trying to find their identity. So that's why the scripture says we got 10,000 of them. Come on. But we've got very few fathers and mothers. That's right. Mm. Yes. Very few. That's right. Mm -hmm. case, did you have something to say? Um, no, no, no. B Bishop had just took it all the way home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's important because the character of a father is to correct you. Mm -hmm. and, 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 what, and when I become so familiar with you and you know about me like I know about you, mm -hmm. I have a hard time correcting you. And I think that was one of the successes of, of, of true fathers that I come out of. They kept that line of demarcation and mm. you never crossed that line. Mm. You didn't cross that. I don't care if you sat at the dinner table with him. You didn't That's cross right. that line. I don't care if you rode in the car. There is strategically another level of responsibility between fathers and elder brothers. Because an elder brother will get tired of telling you don't do it and let you do it. Well, yeah. you know, um, Tamar's elder brother, Absalom, he did wind up a couple of years avenging her. But his initial response to her was, don't say nothing because this is your family. Is that the correct thing to say? Because this is your church. Don't say nothing. Keep your mouth closed. Just suffer in silence, even though your honor has been taken away from you. You know, since we're talking about the elder brothers, you know, what about that advice? <laughs> you know, it seemed like every time we have an answer, I, have to have more come back with something else. I mean, it's more foolishness. I mean, I mean, every time we got something, you come back with more foolishness. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, Pastor Hattie, I think, I think, I think this this conversation and and, and the issues that's coming to the surface. I applaud you for having this panel yes. because these things do occur. Uh, we are taught, but I don't think it's, it's I don't think it's the nomenclature of the church. I think it's the culture of the African American people mm -hmm. that we keep everything that happens in the family amongst the family. Mm -hmm. But here's the issue with that: you suffer in silence. And no one in the family takes corrective measures to see that you are justified, mm. or that you are rehabilitated. All you do is you're left to heal by yourself. I don't mind uh, uh, someone saying to me, uh, Bishop, let's keep this within the confines of the Bishop's boardroom. Mm. But here is going to be the corrective actions that we're going to take for this situation not to happen again. again. Not sweep it under the rug because we don't want stuff to be exposed. Listen, we're all human. So guess what? Everybody having sex. No. Amen. Everybody having sex in our churches. Everybody's doing something they ain't got no business doing. It's a part of the human condition. The problem is we're not open about having a conversation. <laughs> we're, just, we're not honest about the conversation and saying, saints, this is what's going on. And these are the corrective measures that we're going to take to rehabilitate a particular individual. And this is deep, but it's true to whom much is given. Much is required. The higher up you are, yes, that means the greater your infraction, and your infraction is great based on your level. It's mm. not that your infraction is any worse than someone that's sitting in the pew, mm. but you're not sitting in the pew. You're sitting in a lofty position. So the greater the responsibility, the greater the greater the responsibility. Uh, when you fall, there's a great, oh my God, there's a great level of, 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 of fallout, mm. collateral damage. Some people leave church. If I fell, if Jackie fell, yeah. if Cordelia fell, if you fell, and it became a national story. Yeah. You know how many people love our ministry mm. and some 
would silently walk away mm -hmm. and never have confidence in church anymore. That's true. So that's why we got to always be real honest with people and stop with this facade and cascade of perfection. I'm mm -hmm. not perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm giving God a perfect effort, but I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm giving God a perfect effort, but I'm not perfect. So when you teach that with grace and mercy and love, when people do stop falling and you put them on this, this corrective measure mm -hmm. uh, process where you take them down, not because you don't love them, but you take them down so they can heal and they can develop and mm -hmm. learn something from it. Mm -hmm. They become better when you bring them back. Because there's a level of humility that goes along with a fall. That's you right. fall because you're full of arrogance and pride, and you don't think nobody's gonna find out. But when you when you when you when it's exposed, that pride, your ego has been bruised. Mm. God can really use you when mm. you come back to him broken because of humility. That's mm. true. Mm. That's true. Mm. Mm. That's powerful. Well, um, Prophet Kadia Wallace, is it wise? <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start it off with you. Is it wise to beg a man to marry you just because he had sex with you? Sure. What? <laughs> <laughs> because Absolutely. some women take that very serious. This is my, my treasure. So if I gave it to you, then you have to marry me. And some women will, I've known women that will beg a man to marry her just because... Awesome. They had sex. Now we all know the Bible talks against fornication, but is it wise for a woman to constantly beg a man to marry her because they had intimate moments like that? I have a lot of wives, Lord. Have <laughs> Lord. <laughs> My God, shut that, your line down. That's fair. <laughs> Absolutely not. No. Absolutely not. Because marriage is more than sex. Mm -hmm. sure. Marriage is more than sex. And if he is only marrying you for sex, he will wear tire of you because of sex. And 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 and, and I just want to piggy pack on that for a second mm -hmm. because <laughs> there I, I, my mouth is open because I think more of me mm. than to say you have to marry me because I had sex with you mm. I think more of me and maybe the problem is we are not raising daughters mm. who have who have women that, that will pour into them, not to make them arrogant, not to tell them to buy Louis, not to give them Chanel, not, not those things, but to put in them a level of confidence. You know, Bishop said it, you, 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 you fell into a, a, a bed of red roses. You know, you did it. Acknowledge that you did it, but it does not qualify you to be a woman that's on her knees, mm. you know, begging for matrimony because mm. it's not going to work well for you. Mm. Marriage is tough enough with love. Mm. And at the end of the day, if you just think this nigga will going to marry you because you went to bed with him and, and, and that's appealing and that's enough for you, it's not going to work. Mm. I would pray for my spiritual daughters. I would that if they found themselves in that place, that they would have enough God-centeredness, that they would repent unto the Lord, and that they would, I, the word that Bishop used a few minutes ago was help. Mm -hmm. Get some real counsel. You can't get counsel from girlfriends mm -hmm. unless they are girlfriends that hold you accountable. That's right. And most of us want people that just endorse what we're doing. Mm. But you need somebody that's going to say, this is bad for you. It's unhealthy for you. You need to check in every two hours. If you find yourself running back over there, you need to make a phone call quick, fast, in a hurry. Because at the end of the day, this is not going to work for you. Because by the time you continue to beg 
at some point, he's going to already have somebody else in his bed. My Lord. Yeah. That's a silly moment. Prophetess Gates, can you add to that, please? <laughs> I'm, I'm really concerned. Like, I'm, I'm just hung up at the bank. You know, freely give, freely receive. Mm. I understand why a woman, it makes me think, and I'm somewhat analytical, is this a virgin? Is this someone who just is their first time? Because why would you categorize yourself as a beggar? Mm. And mm. That when there's plethora of men, this doesn't mean that you let down your standard, but it's a type. Why does why do you just have to have that man? Mm. Why does it just have to be him that you're now at a begging stage? Mm. And so I, the woman scares me. A woman like that in the 21st century scares me. Um, I, I don't. I don't know. I, and, and you know, um, I think that what you're doing, Pastor Hattie, calling all Hannahs, all the girls together. I think it will be apropos if Bishop Page will call all the men together, get the Davids together, tear <laughs> <laughs> out his clothes. <laughs> no, but I'm not trying to be comedian. But I'm, I'm serious. I think that the men need to be held to account, a great accountability yeah. because of headship, because of leadership, because um, they are the progenitors. I think that if we get our men to come together and understand from a female perspective mm. that things are out of bounds, mm. that we would have a girl today with all mm. this knowledge, with women that have been broken, we've all been broken hearted. I don't believe, and I'm not trying again to put women down, but I don't believe there are no more versions. I think there's only version drinks. And that's it. <laughs> I don't think any more versions in this world. Um, but I think that we should come together and have a conclave and see what is going on that I need to beg you for what's it. Where is the goal? Where, is it in a treasure? Or is it on the tip of something that I don't know? I ain't never seen in my life. Sure. And I will go back and beg no man for nothing. Hmm. Now. So so that, that may be some of those things. It's arrogance. But I think we need to get that girl quickly and say, honey, I don't know if you swing it from the chandelier. But if you just can hold on a little while longer, <laughs> God got somebody for you that's going to appreciate your anatomy, your mind, everything. But right now, you're not a smart girl because mm -hmm. we don't beg. We don't beg. We don't we beg. Can, you know, our time is coming to an end, but I just want to ask this last question. <laughs> don't go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was so taken back by this story because towards the end, when she did beg him and he said no, he shouted out to another servant and said, come and get this woman and put her out. What do we say to the other servants who take those type of um, commands that serious where now they are putting themselves in a compromising way because they think that they're being obedient too. Because after all, I am serving this person, even though I know they just did this person wrong, but I'm going to now obey my leader or obey my mentor, whoever it is, because I still have a loyalty to them, even though my loyalty to them is causing me to mishandle someone who was treated unfairly. I would say dummy. <laughs> I would say dummy, and I would tell them, we want to get spiritual and have a scripture. There is a Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> and what ends up happening is, if you don't, if it, if you don't cut it, if you don't decapitate it, Mm -hmm. you're going to have a massacre. You're going to have a whole lot of bleeding sheep mm -hmm. because it's like we want to put everything on the spirit, but where is the common sense? That's it. Where's the common sense? You don't have to have a PhD. Just have some common sense. If you see someone's been violated and that person now, this <laughs> higher power is now saying, put them out and you come on. They're looking for a slave, but I thought we were free. I thought we were liberated. Mm. So there's somewhere where that word level in that environment is low because people don't know scripture and we have to be dangerous because that Nebuchadnezzar spirit, there is an idol. That person is mm. an idol. They're not trying to honor God. They're not trying to honor themselves. They're honoring. Mm. They, they have built an idol. Mm. And you got to watch that system. That system. Mm -mm. 
Well, That's let me throw this. Let me throw this curveball in there. The late Archbishop Wilbur Sterling McKinley <laughs> you look at Rich Page laugh. said something to me many, many years ago, <laughs> and that was, "You never fight a man in his own house." Mm. And even if the servant was instructed to remove the young lady and it was wrong and he knew it was wrong, it would still be his responsibility to follow the authority of that house. Now, mm. what he did after he brought her out, he may mm. have clothed her, he may have covered her, he may have tried to give her or give that that woman the help that she needed, but he was on duty. And mm. if he was on that duty, the probability is that he had seen this behavior before. Wow. And if he had seen the behavior before, then he was doing what he had already seen done mm. before. And, and it's very, it becomes very complex because you're following this person that you call your leader and you and you have an affection to your leader and you have a love for your leader but you still want to do what's right the better That's thing right. to do is to assist that person out mm. make sure that they are in the hands of someone that mm. can help them outside mm. the door or outside the outside of the church. Mm -hmm. And then you have to make a decision. Do I stay here or do I leave? Mm -hmm. But that in that person's house, like he was instructed, come get that person. It says he was a servant to, to this man. He mm -hmm. was doing his task, you know, and, and, and we sometimes get those things construe oh mm -hmm. she should you know he should he should go in there and he shouldn't do that and he now now you're you're creating something that at the end of the day it's not your house to make that decision and mm -hmm. if you are that unhappy in mm -hmm. the house then you leave the house mm -hmm. but to um to 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 put put yourself and put her in even worse position, I think that there, there are repercussions for all of that. Mm. Mm. Pastor Jackie. Can I go fast, Hattie? I'll yes. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I want to stay in my place and in my lane. <laughs> I love you know, it's your show. It's your I love show. It. I love it. Definitely there is some wisdom to what um, Dr. Wallace, Pastor Wallace is stating. However, it just sounds too Jim Jonish for me. And um, I just, and I, and I, and I am wholeheartedly with um, authority and not usurping authority over that, those that have the rule over you. Mm -hmm. um, but where I'm just so lost with is the idea, I don't, it's not biblical to me. I don't know. I don't know all the 66 books, but I don't, I can't support that type of behavior mm -hmm. and the honor of serving. Mm. It, 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 let me let me say it like this. If you have a, yeah. no, no, no. If a young man comes in your office, young mm -hmm. man comes in your office and there's a confrontation between you and he, mm -hmm. you're going to call outside the door and tell one of your male adjutants, come put him out. Right. Right. That that male adjutant has a choice now because he may say, well, you know, I overheard Pastor Jackie yelling at that person. I, I overheard Pastor Jackie, you know, saying things to him that wasn't pertain. He may say all of those things. Does he not take him out of your office? Mm. Does he not take him out of your church? Does he not follow your direction? Now, once he gets him outside the door, he may say, man, let's get in the car. Let's go take a ride. Let's let's kind of figure this out. Let's let's cool down. Da, 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 da. That's all I'm saying. But right. if he's in your house, if, if the church that you're going to be installed in tomorrow, mm -hmm. if that person is in your house and he is your servant, 
he should follow your direction. Right, but there's a difference, and with all due respect, there is a difference between a shepherd's um, instruction and then maybe I heard her question wrong because I thought that the question was implying that this person that come in, it has some level of seduction mm -hmm. or it had something tied to relational. Mm -hmm. It had mm -hmm. that kind of tone. Is yeah. it a shepherd's instruction? Because a shepherd's instruction is a shepherd instruction. I might crack somebody else's head and uh, uh, elder and then the adjective could be right there and they are subject to silence because one there could be that elder could have a family it could be a whole lot of variables to it mm -hmm. but that's not is, was that the question no the 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 the, the, the text says no no that he, asked hattie's question she asked a question about the servant coming in and then um being told to put her out correct that that the well, servant was told of relational church there's situation no I, I was referring to the situation where the servant knew what was going on okay in so. that situation where he knew this woman because she had she you know obviously when she came out she had a beautiful dress on the bible says and then she put okay. ashes on her dress so he knew that there was some violation done and he did what his leader told him to do i'm going to mishandle you and throw you out I'm going to put you out. And so I'm saying at that situation, you know, how does the servant handle themselves when they see the injustice done to an individual such as this and now have to make a decision? Do I follow what my servant said or do I follow God? You know, Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. You know, do we take our loyalty too far to man where we put it over what the word of God said? That's really where I was basing my um, my question from. So maybe okay. it was me that miscommunicated um, that. <laughs> it's all right. I thought we was in human experience. I know we're still in biblical order. All right. <laughs> No problem. So, yes, I absolutely, um, you know, come back and I will say, you know, firstly, let me apologize for not hearing the, the proper context of where you were stating the question. I didn't hear it correctly. So I would definitely uh, say don't usurp authority over your leader. Um, but I will also say pastoralship is personal. So whom you to lead you, that don't mean that you just up and leave because you've been corrected. But mm -hmm. I do think, as Pastor Wallace said, when you leave from doing your instruction, now you have a decision to make. Do you stay or do you leave? So I, I, I'm clear now. I'm sorry, audience. I'm sorry, my panel. I got you now. No, 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 no. I, no, 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 no. I don't think there's need to, um, if I can, inter if I can insert it. In, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't think that there was a need to apologize. Mm -hmm. And I think the tension of perspectives being different is kind of healthy mm -hmm. in terms of kind of stretching that hermeneutic because I'm looking at it from both from both angles and you know I I I, I really see what you're saying, Jack, and I really do that sometime and then I, I see what where Cordelia coming from too. I think as from where I, where I sit, I see so much unhealthy manipulative leadership Absolutely. until uh we let we let people get very close to us and they see our nakedness mm -hmm. and they know we have clay feet mm -hmm. and they know we don't handle everybody right and i think now we put them in a position where they disrespect us and they dishonor us based on having privileged information now, they may not go out and say it, but you can tell when you lose the influence that you had over someone because they've been too close to you and they become so familiar. And familiarity does not have to be that you saw me do something ungodly. But in many instances, you see me from more of an earthly carnal view than you see me as the man of God. So. There are people that we give orders to, our directives to, instructions to, mm -hmm. and they can tell, you know what, Bishop, you was in your flesh when you told that person to do that. And you know what? I'm just going to do it 
because you're the leader and this is your house. But here's where I come in at with you, Jacqueline. I think by virtue of you working closely with me, you have a responsibility to speak truth to power. That's right. By virtue of our relationship, yeah. after you have followed my directives, come yeah. back and say, Bishop, let me tell you something. I did that because you're my leader. Mm -hmm. And I respect you. And this is the house that God has given you. But I don't agree with you. I don't think that was right. I think that there's a way to have conversations with your leader. That's and right. if your leader is sensitive even to the voice of God, they may not hear you then. That's right. Mm -hmm. You say it right. When That's they right. go home and they lay down in that bed or they in their prayer time, God's going to bring it to them that, you know what, Jackie came to you and said something to you, Paige. Why you didn't hear her? What you what you mean, Lord? You didn't talk to that person right. And you put her in a bed. Because see, That's what right. happens is when we have people carry out hits for us, That's we, right. we, we, we put them. Because see, what happens is we got armor bearers as our hit men and our hit ladies. That is so good. And we send them to do our dirty work. Wow. And then they do it and they know it's wrong, but out of loyalty, misguided loyalty, but loyalty nonetheless, they do it. And at the end of the day, though, I, 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 I agree with both of you, but I think that God is sick and tired of that type of leadership. Yes. You're really yes. tired of that type of leadership where you just follow me blindly. Everything I say is yes, sir. No, you need to think sometime and say, you know what? I'm going to do it, but I got to talk to Bishop first. Before I, before I execute that, the Bishop, you told me to put her out. Mm -hmm. Bishop, straight up, what she do? Mm -hmm. that, that, that Bishop, Bishop, you know what? Why don't you think, think that over, Bishop? Mm. We, Bishop, if you love me, we think that. See, I think people that are close to us That's right. know how to broach conversation if they're really close to us. Right, and, right. And, and if they love us, if they really love us, they don't want us to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. So right. they're willing to take a hit in order for us to stay right in the eyes of the people. I was taught I need to be sanctified in the eyes of the people. And mm -hmm. how I do that is by my people around me taking mm -hmm. hits for me. But my God, after a while, how many hits do you take for me before you mm -hmm. say, Bishop, you're making a fool out of yourself and you're making a fool out of us. Bishop, <laughs> can you think about that? Bishop, having her come to your office wow. at the church. It don't look good. Bishop, mm -hmm. me sliding her number, that don't look good. Talk Bishop, up. going on vacation with her, that don't look good. It, it, pe people who love you come to you and tell you, That's I right. think you should do that. And if you love them, you give them that access to mm -hmm. tell you what they see. That's now, you don't have to do it, but at least you can't say they didn't attempt to tell you. That's mm. right. Mm, that was well balanced. That's, That's good. Powerful. Excellent. Excellent. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can stay here all day. I always can, but I don't want to, you know, keep the people. I know Pastor um, Prophetess Jacqueline Gates got a big day tomorrow, but I'm just going to ask each of you, you know, just leave some final words with our audience today. And I'm asking that um, Prophetess Jackie, if you will go first, Bishop Page, if you will go uh, second, and Prophetess Cordelia, when you leave your words, would you also pray and uh, challenge the people to sow a seed? Yes, God bless you, Pastor Hattie. Thank you again uh, for allowing me to come on um, and to Bishop Page and certainly to Pastor Wallace. What I would say to the people of God and to everyone listening that is challenged in relationship and um, church and membership, et cetera, you know, that whole um, mix, I would say that we have given you signposts, we have given you um, signals, we've given you things today, tools today that you can actually um, be discerning, that you can think about, think about halt and think about the environment that you put yourself and your destiny. Think about it. Without shifting blame to the male or the female, 
Why don't we, as Bishop, when his inference into this session today, why don't we take self-government? Why don't we take our ownership of our stuff and then make sure that we have an accountability system? Someone to tell you the truth. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. That was that was absolutely profound. And, and I, I want to piggyback off of what she said. Accountability partners are extremely important. Yeah. And I don't think we need to fall into the trap as the church of the irrationality of the cancel culture of today, mm -hmm. where right becomes wrong and wrong becomes right based on how social media mm -hmm. defines it and how they see it. Mm -hmm. I think the church has to be representatives of another kingdom in the earth with standards, uh, with not a floating ethic, mm -hmm. not with transactional relationships, mm -hmm. not with, um, uh, when, you, when I say floating ethics, I'm talking about situational ethics. Mm -hmm. We have to have uh, standards and balance and we must judge people with, with honest scales, not dishonest scales across the board. And what's good for one should be good for someone else. So if you're gonna give someone else a pass, you should give everybody a pass. If you're gonna be hard on one, you gotta be hard on the other. And I think that has a lot to do with our view and the lens we see relationships with in this particular season. I want to say that I am always blessed when I'm surrounded, not with just gifted, anointed practitioners of the word, but these three women are tremendous thinkers. I'm honored. I am humbled. I'm made better by just being included in this, this conversation. And I pray that this is one of many that we will continue to have because I know men and women both are being blessed yes. by this level of dialogue. Yes. Wow. Well, thank you again, Pastor Hattie, and to the newly almost installed Dr. Gates, yes. and surely to um, Bishop Page. One of the things that just um, I keep hearing is that this is a season of transition. Mm. And whether we recognize it or not, God prepared us during the pandemic to bring us to this very hour. Yes. And not to bring us to this hour doing the same things that we did uh, before the pandemic, mm -hmm. but to bring us to this hour that as we, as we move now forward, and that's the word I keep using, as we move into our future, as we move forward, as we move and walk more into destiny, we must recognize and look at the things that have not worked and really do what Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind us. And we press towards the mark. I think every one of us that sit here, we can, uh, we can be very clear about saying that there's a new level of maturity. There's a new passion to get it right. I want to get it right. I, I said to my kids the other day, I, I don't have as long as my husband had to get it right. So I've got a shorter a shorter window to get it right. And as we move into this, I think when we see what we saw in 2 Samuel and we see um, the, the lack of, a, of leadership in David uh, and we see the inability to be able to decide what love is and what love, lust is not. Mm. We need to address all of these things. We need to move now into a place where the church becomes healthy. That's what Bishop was really talking about. A place where people do. They don't come with, with they come with problems, but they leave healthy. They leave with accountability. They leave with standards. They leave, you know, we use this word balance. We leave with balance and we still leave holy. Mm. And we know that there is nothing that God cannot do for us. And mm. so I pray that as we have listened, men and women, I think I heard Bishop say men and women, thank you, Pastor Hattie, for yes. gathering us together. But as we navigate now, 
into this new place because we're not going back to the old Mm -mm. as we navigate. We're not going back to no matter when the doors open, no matter how many people they say can come in, something has changed in heaven and it now will manifest on earth. And so we will do it differently to ascertain what needs to be done. As we do that, we will be accountable to each other. We as leaders have been now recalibrated. We are more sensitized. We are more hearing, not just hearing from God, but we're hearing and we're listening to a people that are in a point of transformation. And it is our assignment to get them there and on the course that God has destined for their their lives. Um, Let's pray. Most gracious Father, we just bless you and we thank you for how awesome you are. You always know what we need. You always have inkling to where we're going. You're taking us there. We thank you. We thank Mm. you that someone this afternoon who was in distress, someone has been raped, someone has been abused, someone has been mistreated. I pray now, Father, that you would touch that man or even that woman. I pray that even now, Father, that divine healing and the anointing of God would go to their home, go to their car, wherever they were viewing us from and do what you do best. You can do it better than us laying hands. You can do it and make them whole. Father, I pray that you would not only carry us through this season, but you've given us the strength now to walk. I pray that each one of us will glean and learn and remember the things that we have heard and we'll adjust ourselves so that the place that you're taking us, we won't ever have to look back and say we made another mistake. Bless this woman of God who has gathered us together. Bless Pastor Gates on her elevation on tomorrow. And then look on Bishop Page. Bless everything that he does. Bring him to higher places and greater opportunities in the name of the Lord Jesus. Bless every man and every woman that would even sow seed back into this ministry, causing us to know that we are not just in a time that you're going to bless us because of a stimulus check. You have written more checks from heaven that are getting ready to be released than a stimulus check. We bless you and we thank you for your greatness. Now do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I could even ask or think. In Jesus' name I do pray and we say amen. For those of you that are listening to me, I want to take this opportunity. Yes, God. And I'm going to ask that even now that you would, this, this conversation has surely caused something to leap on the inside of you. Uh, sometimes you were a little perplexed and you were like, oh, I wish they <coughs> wouldn't say that, or I wish they wouldn't say this. But these kinds of conversations are getting us ready for where we're going. This these way. next three years, 21, 22, 23, God's going to show us things that we can't even imagine. There's mm. a scripture that found in the book of Joshua, and it said it will be an amazing time. Mm-hmm. This is going to be an amazing time. And so this afternoon, I'm going to ask that everyone that is listening, if you don't have it, don't complain. But mm. we're in a new season. Yes. So if you have that $100 seed, we're going to ask that you would sow that seed. Somebody said, but there are no buts. If you've got that $100 seed, sow that $100 seed. It's going to cash at $8 sign, HR Ministries. And then after you do that, if we were in a sanctuary, I would tell you, everybody knows I love to be a praiser. And so I would ask that you would praise God, not for where you are, but for where you know someone else is going. Because this is a season that I don't have to be jealous over anyone. Because what God is doing for me, he's also doing it for someone else. So take this moment, make sure that you sell that $100 seed when you have done that. Somebody said, Pastor Wallace, I I, I don't have a $100 seed, but you got a $50 seed. Every person that has listened this afternoon, it is your responsibility now to sow a seed and let's do it. Those of you that are sowing that $100 seed, that $50 seed, I need you to start doing it right now. Make sure when you do it, make sure you go into that chat and you start doing done, 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 done. Because this is the time. I see so many of you doing it. Thank you so much. Make sure you do it. Let's start to do it right now. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sowing that $100. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you, Pastor Jackie. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate you. Come on. We've got to do this. It is our responsibility to be certain 
that this ministry, this is ministry. Yes, All of is. us have ministered to you. So I need to see you sow those seeds. Let's sow those seeds this afternoon. Knowing, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lady Carter. Uh, knowing that God is doing what God does best, best and he knows how to bless you best. Thank you, Sister Anita. Thank you. Thank you. I see you doing it. We're back in the hands of um, uh, Pastor Hattie, but I need you to keep doing it. I need everyone that has listened. Thank you so much. I see you doing it. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you again and again and again. Pastor Hattie, it's in your hands. Thank, thank you, you so much, Prophetess Wallace. I, you know, I, I'm just... Um, overwhelmed today. I know today's discussion was a bit heavy for some, but I do believe what you said. I believe that this is a time of transition. And I know that when we do return back into the brick and mortar, some things has to be gutted out prior to us going back. And I believe that God is calling us to a new standard of living, to a new standard even of happiness. And we can't move on with the old baggage. And so I'm just so grateful to each and every one of you, Dr. Jacqueline Gates, Bishop Liston Page, and you, uh, Prophet Wallace, for joining me and assisting me because I still believe that this is ministry. It's a different forum, but I still believe it's ministry. And I think that it's wonderful when you can sit down and just talk about some things that the people or the lay people are talking about. Now we're talking about it and we are addressing it. And so I pray that each and every one of you were blessed. And I hope to see you again next month because we will be back next month until the Lord says different. Prophetess Gates is going to be back with us. Yes, <laughs> Bishop, Bishop going to bring I'll, some men. Bishop will be back. <laughs> Bishop going to bring back some men. He got to bring at least two men on this panel. <laughs> We're gonna roast you know, the food. We got listen here. Bishop, you got an assignment. You gotta find some men now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We want to get some phone numbers. Oh, we I believe that it. this is great. I, I really do. It's so many people flood the emails after because there's so many people that go back and watch the replay. Yes. Um, and I know that they're being blessed by the transparency, by the realness of it, and it's scripture. So I'm asking that those of you that know people who were not on, really get them to go back and look at the replay because I still believe that deliverance even happened even in this forum. And we will be back next next month. Stay tuned to it. God bless all of you and have a wonderful weekend. God's blessings be upon each and every one of you. Thank you.